However, even if you have been through it, you are going to get some more clarification right here as we go through Elijah of today. Elijah of today. Brothers and sisters, uh, this is a present truth message to the Seventh Day of Venice Church. Let me repeat that. This is a present truth message. The Seventh Day of Venice has been given all the revelation up to this point. All the other denominations, all they have is a portion of the truth. That is why God said many sheep of I. But his church is not up to par, up to standard. That is why he had said in the book of um, Revelation that this last church is wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I know that many of us don't want to accept that. That's my... I know many of us don't want to accept that, but it is what it is, and it can't be other than it, it is, because <laughs> it is said by the true witness. Christ is the true witness. He can see the dark, secretive part of the church. And as, although we can see the bright part of the church, we still must trust God. He said there are some darkness that we are supposed to get rid of. Yes, he loves his church. He dies for his church. We'll be doing a subject uh, prophecy in Hosea 1, 2, and 3, and you will see what the Lord has done to keep his church to bring her back from promiscuous relationship and from going away from him. We will see more profoundly in that um, revelation what Christ is doing regarding his church. But, um, <coughs> but um, we just want to take it one one at a time, one at a time. All right, anything on that? Let me involve you so that uh, <clears throat> anything on that? Elijah of today. All right, well, let's go through the the slides here and see what we can glean for us. From it as you're learning, I am learning, right? Let's learn this together. Or let's study this together. All right. So we'll look at Elijah. Who is the Elijah of today? When will he be on this scene? Where will he arrive? What day will he be around? And the message the message that he will have and the time. And if we are Elijah's of the latter days, then we must fit into this. And the first way to fit into this, we must understand this. All right, brothers and sisters, so let us, by the grace of God, go there. So, <clears throat> Here we are seeing, we have read the memory verse, and our memory verse for today is Malachi 4 and verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And that was read in a very clear manner uh, by my queen. And so, you have gotten it both ways. So, let's go. Quoting <clears throat> from Testimonies to Ministers, page 475. Prophecy must be fulfilled. The Lord says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. 
Somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. And when he appears, men may say, You are too earnest. You do not interpret the scriptures in the proper way. Let me tell you how to teach your message. Let me tell you how to teach your message. Yes. Brothers and sisters, let's break this down. <clears throat> the scripture was quoted by the prophet, and here's the breakdown. The breakdown is to be found in Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 475. The prophecy must be fulfilled. This prophecy, no less, uh, has been fulfilled within the church. The that's where it starts. Remember, God's people always get it first. Um, and then it goes. Because that's how God works. We have no, he has no other hands, no other lips, no other voice but his people. So, no matter what you believe, no matter what you may think, it is what it is. And it cannot be other than what it is. So prophecy must be fulfilled. The Lord says, Behold, I will send you Elijah. Now, hear the breakdown or the comment, the inspired comment of this scripture. Remember, turn your Bible. Bibles are open. Open your Bible. <coughs> um, it is your responsibility. All right? It's your honored responsibility to open your Bible and read for yourself. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now somebody, watch this now, somebody is to come. That is after Ellen White. There is another prophet to the seventh day at Venice Church. It doesn't matter if you don't care about the one that is here now <laughs> or the one that has written the spirit of prophecy. It doesn't matter because the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Christ. Right? Take it or leave it. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19.10. All right? So here it is, somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. And when he appears, men may say, you are too earnest. You do not interpret the scriptures in the proper way. Let me tell you how to teach your message, brothers and sisters. Number one, it is in the future. Number two, he will be in the spirit and power of Elijah. Number three, when he appears, masculine gender, personal pronoun, when a man, when a man, when a prophet, this, the, 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 the woman, the prophetess is predicting, is prophesying, that there will be a male within the seventh day at Venice Church with the spirit and power of Elijah. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, watch this, watch this. So, we're number three. He, masculine gender, gender personal pronoun. Let's go on and see what else is there. Men may say, you are too earnest, you do not interpret. He is an interpreter of scriptures. Number four. Brothers and sisters, let's run through that. What is number one? <clears throat> somebody will come in the spirit. Somebody will come. That's the future to Ellen White. It will be in the spirit and power of Elijah. Number two. Three. He, men may say, <clears throat> yeah, when he appears, when he appears mm -hmm. that's number three. He is 
referring to a man, no matter what is going on in society. You see why we have to hold on to the Word of God? Because all these deceptions are shooting up in the skies now. And are we not, if we are not holding on to the truth of God, we are going to be shut out uh, with their, with their um, spurious uh, <clears throat> philosophies. Brothers and sisters, we saw that number four is what? You do not interpret. He is an interpreter. Brothers and sisters, is a, there will be an interpreter. And <clears throat> the fifth one, let's see if number five is there. You will not interpret the scripture in the proper way. That means he will be uh, he will be criticized, he will be condemned, maybe, as denounced as, as, denounced, as John <laughs> the Baptist was, right? Yes. John the Baptist, Elijah was denounced. Mm. Uh, John the Baptist, who came in the spirit and power of Elijah, was denounced and beheaded. And so this third, brothers and sisters, number three, means God, Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. God the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and God the Son. Uh, so, whatever you believe, it is subjected to the Word of God. All right, brothers and sisters? Okay, now, what we have here is to find number five. It says, let me tell you how to teach your message. Number five, he has a message. He's an interpreter. He's a man, brothers and sisters, in the spirit and power of Elijah. And he comes after Ellen G. White. Brothers and sisters, don't ever miss this. Don't ever miss this. Because this forms the foundation of the most profound, the most critical truth to the Seventh-day Adventist Church that all the other prophets will correspond, will affirm, will agree, will sign off. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it will be signed off. Go ahead. This is a comment here. Mm. Sister White does not mean to say that she is that prophet Elijah. But plainly says a prophet must come. And it is said to be a prophet with the same spirit and power of Elijah. This prophet must come before Ezekiel 9 is fulfilled, for the prophecy of Ezekiel is similar to Elijah's experience with Israel in the days of Ahab. Remember King Ahab. Very good. Elijah's work in the days of Ahab, king of Israel, was to prove to Israel that they had apostatized, and after doing so, he took the priests or prophets and cut their heads off and threw them in the brook. Such was the spirit and power of Elijah. Oh, you catch that. <clears throat> Such was the spirit and power of Elijah. Oh, brothers and sisters, I tell you, God has taken the rain in his hands. Praise the Lord. And mm -hmm. though Elijah commanded those uh, who were on his side, who, were, who repented, to catch the, the false prophet and cut off their heads, today God has taken the rain in his own hand. And so the last Elijah and his followers, his helpers, will not be doing that. God has been, will be sending angels as predicted in Ezekiel 
chapter 9, that uh, he, uh, that he, brothers and sisters, will have six angels to do that. And that is six because he doesn't want us to confuse that with the seven last plagues. He doesn't want us to confuse that with the seven last plagues. Uh, it is something that is local. It is for the Seventh-day Adventist Church because that's where the Elijah and the Elijahs will be found, brothers and sisters. All right, so we got that? Get it. Got it. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> so, we read something here that is quite, quite interesting and quite, quite, uh, <clears throat> quite solemn. Something here that is quite solemn. Ah, uh, now, there are quite a few statements that you will find explained by uninspired men in our leadership. Let me repeat that. There are many inspired statements that have been explained away or there is something else, a spin is put on it. It has been spun to fool you and this statement is one of them. Alright, it is time to show you something. Now, <clears throat> it is called appendix. It is called appendix. You will go to the appendix. Let me see if I have it here. Maybe I don't have it. <coughs> but I'll see. Maybe I have it. The appendix will be placed somewhere in the, in the explanation of Ellen White. All right? Just as she explained in Testimonies to Ministers 445. Uh, therefore, watch. Uh, <coughs> okay, I'll see that later. The, um, the, Uh, the appendix note will be placed where you have testimonies to Minister 475 and if I don't find it I will tell you what it says and you go look it up. I guess that's the best thing to do. I'll tell you what it says and you go look it up. Well, what the appendix says is that Ellen White, in this prophetic revelation, was referring to herself. <laughs> All right? She was referring to herself. Um... <clears throat> and therefore, that was, that was an attempt, or is an attempt, to stop you from understanding that there is another message to the church. Even though the same people may not even believe in Ellen White, they are explaining the words of Ellen White, right? 
They are uninspired. They didn't get it from God. She got her explanation from God. But they attempt, they are explaining her writings to fool you. They are explaining away the writings of the testimonies of the spirit of prophecy to fool you. But God's people will not be fooled. God's people will not be fooled. Let me find something here for you. Uh, we have read this time and time again. Uh, <clears throat> we have read this time and time again in the great controversy. Uh, <clears throat> let, let me ask you to find it for me. Uh, <clears throat> but it is warning to be noted, rejected. you know, that um, warning rejected. Yes. No prophet that God has sent to his church has ever been accepted. Very well. <clears throat> well Even Christ himself was Christ, Christ uh, yes. <laughs> no prophet is right. <clears throat> furthermore. Wait, wait a moment. So, I'm telling you this, and I want you to go online and plug in Great Controversy 388, 383 or 388, 88, Great Controversy 388, plug that in, or 88, Chapter 21. No, no. just look. Um, um, <clears throat> uh, 383. Uh, yes, 388. 388. Uh, or, or the chapter is chapter 20, 21. 21. It's chapter 21 on this, but I'm not sure if you have the book. Mm. But look for chapter 21. It's under the topic uh, the <clears throat> a warning rejected. A warning rejected. Under the topic, a warning rejected. All right? Now, in that ordinary, well, the, the distributed great controversy, you will see the same attempt. You will see, find the same attempt in the great controversy. But in this case, they didn't put appendix and explain it away. What they did is cut it out. Clean. Cut it out. So sometimes you hear in church that, you know, you can't cut this out of the Bible. But they cut it out of the spirit of prophecy. Let's read the line that is cut out. Uh, the line that is cut out is this. I'm going to read the paragraph. Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of the Revelation, in a message which is yet future, the people of God are called upon to come out of Babylon. In all the great controversy that you that is now distributed or not, you can find to buy the ABC and whatnot. You will not find this line in there. What will you not find? In a message which is yet future. They cut it out to make you believe that there is no more message to the church. Matthew 20 is clear about another message. 
Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, all are clear about a message to the church, brothers and sisters. And unless you study, it is not for us to play church or just go for the motion or go for the services, the offices. Those are good when you serve. But brothers and sisters, have the truth in your head because you're coming into a time, coming upon a time when those things will not help you if you, have the, if you don't have the word. <clears throat> All right, so we have gone over this. We have found five things, <clears throat> solid, five solid foundation, foundations that prove that this is a message to the church. Again, visit your great controversy. This one is the 1888 edition. If you can find that, compare both. <clears throat> he has a message. He was inspired by God himself. Go ahead. Moreover, if Elijah is a messenger, is to have a message. His message is to be heart-searching, for he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to the fathers. The fathers shall long to see their children saved, and the children shall long to see their fathers saved. And this revival and reformation shall in truth be crowned with the purification of the church with the Lord's slain, the antitypical false prophets of today. Isaiah 66 and verse 16. <clears throat> All right. Important as it is, however, to keep in mind the time in which the expected Elijah is before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's the time, before. Yet just this knowledge alone is insufficient to know when and what the great and dreadful day itself is, is all important. So, this Elijah, and remember he must come if you are one that believes that Christ will come the second time, if you are one who believes the second coming of Christ, you must believe that the Bible teaches, or you must understand, uh, the Bible teaches that there will be a preparation. There will be a restoration of all things before the second coming. There will be a preparation for the king to come in to this earth again. And that is talking about what we call a kingdom church. God will bring his church. He will remove the tears. There are those who are running away now with this and that message or messages and believe that this is how God says he will do the separation. Instead of studying the truth that is in the church, they are running with something and God is not in that. He didn't tell us to run away and do our thing. And many will hate you for saying that, and hate me for saying that. But it's the truth. Because if you don't understand, if you don't understand that God will separate the tears, take them away. Mm -hmm. They're charged. Brothers and sisters, Charge 
with defiling the sanctuary of God, even though God will allow them to go and bear, go and ripen like wheat, because when it is ripened, then the harvest will take away the tears first. If you don't understand that harvest, <coughs> we have done. Uh, <coughs> we have done the harvest subject or prophecy, and we again encourage you to take a look at that. So, here we have, uh, we must understand the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Uh, without this knowledge, who could possibly discern Elijah when he should come? That this knowledge must escape us. Inspiration is at pains again to locate the day through Malachi's prophecies. Malachi's prophecy. So, let's follow inspiration, brothers and sisters, in spite of all who will be in objection. So, go ahead. <clears throat> Therefore, as never before, we should pray not only that laborers may be sent forth into the great harvest field, but that we may have a clear conception of truth, so that when the messengers of truth shall come, we may accept the message and respect the messenger. Testimonies, Volume 6, page 420. No other course dare anyone take in this matter. The crown of life demands our most vigilant guarding of it because a foul enemy seeks to wrest it from our grasp. Brothers and sisters, this is quite profound. <clears throat> All over the spirit of prophecy, it is clear that there is a message. There is another revelation, a fundamental to our our doctrines as Seventh-day Adventist, it is clear, and it's all over because, but some of us are unable to see that because we are running with a zeal, not according to knowledge. Yes, brothers and sisters, we are running with a zeal, not according to knowledge. But if we just humble ourselves, and read the spirit of prophecy, believe it and read it. Most of us now have this zeal without knowledge and we are forming organizations, we are forming groups because we believe that it's not enough here but it's because you have to blame yourself first and then those because you have to dig for yourself. You need not go to church and don't dig for yourself. And you need not run without, run with zeal, not according to knowledge. So circle down, circle down. It is here and God is making sure that everyone gets it. The message is not necessary for you to accept because many won't, but it is to witness to you. Ah, no, you never knew that. You never knew that in the, preaching the doctrine the, 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 the second the witness Miller of the, and his associates the message the sole purpose of is not necessary to the, the witness of the, the, the message is not necessarily to outsiders. The message is to witness to Seventh Day Adventist, and the message that comes within the walls of the church is to witness to us, brothers and sisters. We don't have to. Accept? No. It's our free will. Yes, God would uh, 
want us to accept the truth, but hey, he's given us his, that free will and we can choose to reject him if we so choose. Yes, we can choose to reject him. We can choose to curse God. We can choose to do all we care to do with that freedom of choice. He has not taken it back and he will not take, take back our freedom of choice, brothers and sisters. So listen up. There is a message within the Seventh Day Adventist that is crucial to us. That is what will give us oil in the vessels, brothers and sisters. That is what is referred to as the extra oil. Remember, all the virgins possess oil in the lamps. But there's a vessel somewhere that five knew that it was there to refill when the light would have run out, brothers and sisters. These are practical revelations. These are not just gimmicks. These are not, not just uh, information by the way. This is a, a life and death matter and it is, a, it is a subject that we must understand. Read the testimonies. Get them. They are available. They are not read in the church. No. But it's your responsibility to understand that it is the library of the Seventh-day Adventist Church because they are all testimonies to the church, testimonies to ministers and gospel workers, which you are, brothers and sisters, and councils and diets and food, and councils to teachers and parents, and an um, Adventist home. All of those form the library to the Seventh-day Adventist, wherever you are. Don't get bogged down on the church title and church business and leave your spirituality uh, to the winds or to the wind. Brothers and sisters, it is crucial. It is crucial. And on this point, I will tell you that... Uh, <clears throat> There was somebody, somebody way back when, in this, is it the 70s or 30s, uh, back then, he was asking for the message. Where is the message that was rejected in 1888 by the General Conference that was to return? Because God gives chances. He returned the message. Where is it? A superintendent or one of those leaders were asking for it. I don't know if he got the answer. I don't know if that was, was addressed or anybody paid any attention or paid any mind, as we would say. But brothers and sisters, uh, <coughs> it is what it is. There is a message and we must inquire about it and we must dig into it. Um, <clears throat> so, there's those who are to prepare the way for the second coming of Christ are represented by faithful Elijah. Those who are to prepare the way for the second coming of Christ are represented by faithful Elijah. And you think that is a walkover? Uh, as John came in the spirit of Elijah to prepare the way for Christ's first advent. Testimonies, Volume 3, page 62. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, that's where it is. So let's come to the, the question of what is the great and dreadful day? What is it? What is that great and dreadful day that 
the Lord is talking about here. Well, we are going to see it in context. First of all, it is great. Great is attached to it because great will be those who will be sealed. Judgment begins in the house of God. And <coughs> the first set of people that will be sealed will be from those who have the greatest light or the most Bible truth for this time. So that's the Seventh-day Adventist Church. God will seal a few. Why? Not because he want, wants a few. It's just because only a few cares. <laughs> only a few cares. Yes. Ah. So we revisit that text and we see that the Bible says somebody will come before the great and dreadful day. Dreadful for those who did not get the seal. So in God's church there are always two groups. One set will be sealed. One set will face the dreadful day. One set will go out in darkness without oil to replenish the lamps and one set will just reach for the extra oil and replenish the lamp. One set, brothers and sisters, will be like goats and one set will be like sheep. Ah, uh, <clears throat> let's examine what is this great and dreadful day? Blow ye the trump, go ahead. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there had not been ever the like, <coughs> neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. That's Joel chapter 2. Brothers and sisters, breaking down the meaning and the definition of this great and dreadful day, what this, what Joel is telling us, that in that day, God will have an army of saints who will be doing the final gospel work. Brothers and sisters, the great and dreadful day is not the judgment day as we refer to it when Christ would have burst the clouds. No, no, no. The great and dreadful day is before, is during the time when people can be saved. But only those who will have the seal of the living God will be able to say this is a great day. Those who do not in the church of God possess the seal of the living God will experience a dreadful day. Mm. It's a period of time. It starts in the church with God's people, with the truth, and then it extends to the world. That is why the judgment begins in the church first and then in the world. That is why probation closed down 
in the church first mm. and then probation closed for the world in general. Brothers and sisters, God has put this in phases and you must understand that. Don't take it from people. Take it from the word of God. Here is the army that it will be a great day for them and Joel is telling us Brothers and sisters, that is a day as described it in his account of this day as a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds, thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountain, a great people and strong. There has not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it. Brothers and sisters, it says, A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. Let's continue into this. Let's Before see. You go on. Let, go ahead. So, you say the great and dreadful day is not the judgment. No, it's, it, it's involved a judgment, but it's a period of time. This, this day starts and continues. Okay. It's not one moment when Christ is coming um, as that day. We know it will come at midnight, but many are looking at that as the, or that's the explanation, that it is <coughs> when everything is over, when the plagues are falling, and <coughs> Christ would come in the clouds of heaven. No, it's before probation closes for the world but you could look at it as um, the door of the ark shut or probation closes for the church and there is no more no, no more um, grace period is up for the church first yes except you will have these people who are sealed so, but those who reject the message and didn't get the seal, it's dreadful for them, but it's great. So it begins there uh. when, uh, when it is closing down, when the sealing and the cutting down is taking place, yes. That's when it starts. Okay. Right. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people sit in battle array. Before their faces the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall break every one of his ways. They shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. They shall not break their ranks. They shall not break their ranks. Yes, this is a great reformatory <coughs> army. Yes, it's a great... Christ. Evangelistic army, brothers and sisters, that right now you have a chance. Uh, you have a, you are a candidate if you so choose. Remember, we are ex emphasizing that because from every crevice and corner, you will be told that this is false. That God is just going to come and take up His people. No, brothers, God's church. The world will know it. The gov government of the world would recognize the kingdom church of God. Brothers and sisters, yes, they will recognize the kingdom church of God. And that is why we, with the most light, have the greatest responsibility. And brothers and sisters, when you have more 
to whom more is given, more is required. This situation that should be taught among our brethren in the church in terms of getting our houses in order, getting our, ourselves in order, put away sins out of our lives and ready for God's sealing process, which is going on now. It is taking place, but remember it's a message of the hour that witness to us and seals us, enable us to get the seal. Because when the angels take the record, they will say, okay, Dick, Tom and Harry accept the seal. Mary, Jane and Sue didn't, or vice versa. And so that is how we get they seal brothers and sisters if we accept the message. All right, of our time. I think we read this. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Joel 2.28. Uh, we continue some more. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, they shall run upon the wall, they shall climb up upon the houses, they shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars withdraw their shining. Right. <coughs> there is no, none of these activities after Christ comes. Christ will stop in the air. And the people will meet him up there. None of this type of thing will be happening. And so it begs the question, where else could this be? Where else could this be, brothers and sisters? And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong and executed his word. For the Lord, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Ah, brothers and sisters, we are endeavoring to find out what day is this. Verse 12, Therefore, also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your hearts. Brothers and sisters, is this not saying that people will be saved or have the chance to be saved during this day? Yes, brothers and sisters, when this great and dreadful day starts, people will have a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why he's telling us, turn unto him with fasting and weeping and mourning. Let's do that now in his church. The great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5, a day of slaughter. Isaiah 30 and verse 25. A day of darkness according to Joel 2. And a general destruction of the wicked according to Ezekiel chapter 9. Brothers and sisters, let's pray for that day to be great for us. Amen. Not dreadful. Not dreadful, as we are seeing here. Joel's two chapters give us a most compact and vivid view of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. From these alone, we can clearly see what it is like. And as Elijah comes just before that day begins, he must necessarily be the one who is to interpret these prophecies of the day and who consequently announces that the day is at hand. 
brothers and sisters, this is the great and dreadful day. It is the day, again, let me go back and summarize that, the great and dreadful day as seen by these prophets. It says, according to uh, Malachi 4 5. Huh? Yes. Malachi 4 5 calls it what? Great and dreadful. Great and dreadful day of the law. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and is Isaiah 30 25 call it? A day of slaughter. And Joel Isaiah 2 call it? Isaiah. Joel 2 calls it a day of darkness. And Ezekiel 9 call calls it? it a the general destruction of the wicked. The general destruction of the wicked in Jerusalem. Starting with the ancient, and if you were to read Ezekiel 9, you will see that it is not talking about the world, the general destruction of the world, because we have to deal with context. Context is important. It is a general destruction of the wicked in Jerusalem. Read Ezekiel 9, and you will see that all the prophets here Brothers and sisters are saying the same thing. They are talking about a judgment day in the house of God before it gets to the world. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes, you finished. I thought you were looking for something. No, Isaiah 30 verse 25. That's okay. Okay. All right, so let's take a few minutes, look at antitypical Elijah, the prophet, who will prepare the way. All right, so again, go to the previous video on Elijah of the past. We must do that. And then come back, listen to this video of Elijah who is to prepare the way for the second coming of Christ. If this is new to you, well, no problem. Well, the New Testament, Matthew, um, have something for us. Matthew 11, 7, 9, 10, 14. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went ye out to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Okay. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Oh. Notwithstanding, he was in, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Oh. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Mm. Man. So, the face of yes, so let me ask you a question. The Bible says, He that is least in the kingdom, well, first of all, it said John the Baptist, there's no man as great as him, right? Yeah, because he, he was the forerunner of Christ. Yes, but it says in the same breath, that he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. How you uh, harmonize that? Not sure. Look at it. Read it again. He that is 